thank you all the uh, sponsors who have sponsored this event. Especially, I would like to thank uh, IFTA, Holly Hunt, and uh, Refine and Focus for uh, making this event happen. So my name is Purnima Thakre. I am a business and marketing strategist. I work with Refine and Focus. At Refine and Focus, what we do is we enhance our clients' reputation and increase their revenue using innovation-based marketing. And I want to know a little bit about you. So how many of you own a business or are individual, individual consultants or uh, freelancers? Uh, how many of you are designers? Wonderful. Welcome, welcome. So at the end of today's workshop, this is what you are going to achieve. It's a presentation and workshop, a combination. And this is what you are going to learn by the end of. If you have ever taken design thinking before or learned design thinking before, uh, it's great. You are going to learn how to apply it to increasing your revenue. If you don't know anything about design thinking and just heard of it as a buzzword, then you are in for a treat. You have so much. And end of it, everyone, doesn't matter what level of design thinking you are at, even if you are an expert, expert level, still you will get to practice a lot. And design thinking is one of those skills. The more you practice, better you get and better you can apply. Uh, so, before getting into it, I want you to do one thing. I want all of you to answer this question. I don't want to answer, I don't want you to answer it loudly, but just scribble it down somewhere. Just take a moment to think, how will you increase your revenue, and just put it down somewhere. So let's get into design thinking. You have always heard of this design thinking, design thinking, design thinking. And what is this design thinking? So design thinking is nothing but, it's a problem solving method. It's a problem solving method like any other innovation based method. And the special thing about design thinking, it it's the simplest one. It is so simple that it is also taught to kids in the school, like five-year-old, 10-year-olds, even they are able to use it. It's that simple, and that's the beauty of it. This is the one thing that is especially important for us designers, that design thinking uses the design, basic design principles, empathy and experimentation. It strongly believes that those who face the problem are the people who hold the key to solving that problem. If you ask them, if you ask them clearly, ask, if you ask them why, why, why many times, and then go to the cause that lies underneath the problem and solve that problem at the root cause, and by experimenting. You don't want to, this is about the fail, uh, you might have heard many times, like fail faster, fail smaller, but it's important that you fail faster and you fail smaller so that you don't fail huge. That's the point. It has nothing to do with failure, but it has to do with experimenting small and doing it many times so that you get perfect at doing it. And third thing about design thinking, many times people feel that design thinking is all about creativity, it's all about radical thinking, but it's part. It's 50% creative thinking, 50% logical thinking. It's 50% intuitive thinking and 50% analytical thinking. It's where those two meet, that's where design thinking is. It's a way of balanced thinking. It's a combination. It's a, in, in our words, it's a combination of design and business, which is a little bit like, a little bit like me. I'm a combination of design and business. I started my career as an architect, built a lot of resorts, play schools, and residences, then I did my MBA, post MBA. For last eight years, I have been a business strategist and I have helped a lot of companies grow their revenue, enhance their reputation. And I have, I have done this obviously with my company, Refine and Focus, and these all have been our clients that we have helped. You can see they range from Fortune 100 companies to small to medium businesses to individual consultants to nonprofits. You can imagine that we do, we use innovation-based marketing. We use innovation methods and techniques day in and day out. And yet, when I utter words, 
design thinking in front of my designer friends. <laughs> Always. No, not you guys. I have written like, not you guys. Of course not you. But many designers go like, oh. And I had, so I had a lot of conversations with them. I had, for years I have had conversations with them and tried to understand why do they think that way about design thinking. So obviously there is a whole list of reasons why do they think that way. But most importantly, like top three myths that I realized were, first one, a lot of them think that learning design thinking will make other people designers. Do you think that you know taking a three-day program in medicine can make you a doctor? Can a three-day program in law make you a lawyer? No. Exactly that way, just by taking a three-day program in designing is not going to make anyone designer. You know how many years of training and experience it takes to become a good designer. And having said that, design thinking has nothing to do with actual designing. It has to do with using the design design processes and philosophy, understanding it, and applying it to solve the problems that are not design problems, that are business problems or any other problems which are otherwise not solvable by other methods. Then many people, many designers complain of this. You might have heard this many times, that there is no criticism in design thinking. There is no crit in design thinking. How do you use design if there is no crit? Under Agree that there is no criticism in design thinking. There is no peer level criticism. There is no judgment in design thinking. However, the it is replaced by something called as testing. And testing, unlike criticism, is done with your users, your clients, your customers, people who actually matter to the solution that you're trying to create. And that's why it is it doesn't have crit, but it has something that is replaced, replaces crit, and which is so much more important than, and you know that many times, people who give you criticism, they have some other intentions, some underlying motives, it's not just your design. And third myth about design thinking, even a lot of people who practice design thinking believe in this, which is design thinking can solve all problems. Not true. It, design thinking by itself does not solve any problems. It gives you tools, it gives you processes, it gives you methods to solve the problems. Like any other innovation method. Okay, fine. That All that is fine. But why as designers we should embrace design thinking? Because we already have that superpower. We have unfair advantage over the world. We have something that others don't have. We understand design, and we can use that design superpower to solve the rest of the problems in the world, or at least in our business. So let's get started. Now we are going to move to the workshop part of it, like enough talking. I would love to talk. I love to talk. You can imagine that I can go on for hours, but let's do things. Uh, so let's practice the process. And uh, to, because we don't have a lot of time, we are just going to do it really quickly. I wanted to keep it focused. And we are going to keep it focused on two things, which is we are trying to grow your revenue. And we are trying to grow your revenue using client referrals. This is so that we remain on the same page and we don't go in 10 different directions. And we are, even if we practice this for a small time, we are able to make some use of it later. So you might have seen, obviously, you, all of you must have seen design thinking processes. They always look different. Some people use hexagons, some people use squares, circles, all kinds of shapes. Sometimes they are put in one line, sometimes up and down, five circles, six hexagons, seven, nine, doesn't matter. What method you use does not matter. I just picked up one of those. All of them were absolutely fine. In today's workshop, you, I, I know that all of you know all these rules, but we are going to very mindfully, they are also part of your uh, uh, assignment uh, or the handout that's been given to you. We can't be skeptic about the process while we are doing the process, so respect the process, respect 
very soon you are going to partner up. So you are going to respect the person as like like they are your most important client. Like treat them like that. Like listen to them intently. Don't give any judgment. Do one thing at a time. Just listen when you are listening. Uh, stay focused. Uh, be curious. Go on asking why. And because all this we are doing is to go to the root cause, to go underneath the surface. And if you are not curious, you may not be able to understand what's the root cause of it. And go for quantity also goes back to no judgment. When you're coming up with ideas, don't judge your own ideas. Don't think about whether they're going to work, not work, how well they are going to work, and all those things. Just go for quantity. So you ready? Are you excited? <laughs> <laughs> I am. Uh, so individually, just take a minute and uh, think about this. I want all of you to think about your most important client. Now when I, when I say most important, it could be your largest client by revenue, it could be a type of client. It could be a type of client which you have lots of, and they make large amount of revenue for you. Or it could be a client that's the happiest client, and it could be a client which is, who is most important because they are most connected. So, yes, everyone has finished thinking. Such fast thinkers. Oh my God. Okay, now. Uh, we are going to go to the first step of design thinking, which is empathize. Obviously, the way you can't be your own therapist, you can't practice empathy on yourself. You have to practice it on someone else. So find a partner. There's no beer right now, but you know there is beer later on. You are all going to get beer at the reception, which you're going to do after your job. if you made sure to do that. One, take down some notes, because we have, like, all of us do have a strong memory, but as the time passes, it just fades away. Second, you might have noticed everywhere the why was highlighted. Even why questions had another why, which sounds like a grammatical error, but it's not. It's because you, it's for you to remember that after you get an answer, you have to ask why. Why? Like, I love pink rose. Why? As a kid, I was always made to wear pink. Why? My mom loved pink. Why? Because she thought all women should wear pink. Why? Do you understand when you go through that, you can actually go to the underlying reason that I actually don't like pink. It's just that I was told that I like pink, that's why I like pink. Make sense? Because sometimes what people give you as an answer is not the answer, actual answer lies underneath. So now we know about their clients. And if you remember, our focus for today's workshop is we are trying to grow, help each other grow revenue using client referrals. <laughs> So now we are going to ask a few questions for next 15 minutes on client referrals. Does that make sense? And these are your questions. They are also on your handout. Discuss it among yourself and make sure that you are asking why and you are taking down some notes so that you will be able to use all this empathy for the next stage. Let's do it. You guys are the awesome. 
awesome as you think. Does anyone have any questions about what you just did? Like quickly, if you have any questions that you can't hold till the end and want to ask something. Wonderful. See, I just told you, you guys are the awesomest group that I have ever worked with. So now we are going to move on to the stage that we were in. We were discussing things with each other, asking questions, understanding, listening. We were trying to understand what information about this problem that we are facing, which is, you know, maybe our revenue is not increasing as fast as it should. The client is the person who matters for that revenue, so we were asking them the questions about the client. We are going to now move to the stage which is called define. Define is where you actually create a problem statement or a question that you are trying to answer. And usually, Usually, if you are doing this by yourself, you would be the one defining this question, but I didn't want to, it, it's a little difficult to define the question when you're doing it for the first time, so I did it for you. So the question that we are going to solve for today is, in what ways might we increase our revenue in next 12 months by 35% with the help of client referrals? Now, you might, wonder where did 35% come from? Where did 12 months come from? It's like giving yourself some task. Task something that is achievable, which is not crazy. I'm not saying that increase your revenue by 500%. I'm not saying a time, I'm not giving you a timeline wherein you yourself would have changed. I'm not saying over the next five years. I'm giving everything that is achievable and by means that are not that difficult. Like clients are like your friends. You are in touch with them all the time and all we have to do is decide how we are going to ask them for referrals in a way that they would want to give us referrals. So now we are going to, this is the define stage. And now we are going to, because I have done it already for you, I did your homework for you, you we are going to move on to ideate stage. What happens in ideate is you are going to try to answer this question. And when you answer this question, you go on generating as many ideas you can. You will have seven minutes. You can either work with your partner or you, if you are a person who work better with focus when it comes to idea generation, you can work alone. Whatever works for you, just go on throwing out ideas like, what is it? Like, do you want to take them out for lunch? What are you going to say at that lunch? Is it going to be, if you have lots of types of clients, then is it going to be a referral app? Is it going to be, are you going to send them a care surprise care package wherein you will ask to put in a letter which asks them for a referral? What is it? What is it? Is it going to be just pick up the phone and say, what are you going to say then? What are you going to ask for? How are you going to ask for? Are you comfortable asking that? I said a lot, but you don't need to say so much. You just go on writing down ideas and don't judge the ideas right now. We will do that. There is a stage which is just for judging the ideas and we will get to that. Any questions? Awesome. Let's do it. Let's take five to seven minutes and do this as quickly as you can. I didn't want to uh, spook you earlier, say this earlier, which is if you have never used innovation-based methods for problem solving, it feels weird. It feels vague. It feels like, what am I doing? What am I supposed to do? What is that? What answers do you want? What is this? All those things are fine. You know, all design thinking and all innovation-based methods, they work with ambiguity. And it's like developing a new muscle. You know, you go for workout for the first time after a long time, it hurts. It hurts, but then you get, get used to that movement. 
It's exactly the same way. You are working out a new muscle, and you are going to get used to it, and you are going to learn. If you practice more, you are going to learn a method of problem solving that is way faster than other methods. So going back to all those ideas, you generated a whole lot of ideas. What do you do with those ideas now? So design thinking goes through this process at most of the stages, which is diverge and then converge. And not just design thinking, you can apply it to any decision making in your life. You can apply it to where to go for dinner. Make a whole list of options that you have for going for dinner and then apply the filter of what is your favorite food, which is the value for money, which is the closest place, which place delivers the fastest, and all those things. So similar way, with all those ideas that you have generated now, we are going to go to converge. Because we can't execute whatever, like you know, 10, 20, 30 ideas that you have come up with, we can't execute all of them. And we don't want to, uh, like, for lack of better words, we don't want to have analysis paralysis. So how do we protect ourselves from that? So there is a method in design thinking, which is, which is this filter. And this filter of three things, whether your clients, users, customers, whoever those people are, are they going to be in love with this idea? Is it desirable to them? Is it something that's going to work for them? Like, for example, if you asked client for, uh, if, you, if your idea was to take client for lunch and that person you know, doesn't eat lunch, <laughs> weird thing, but doesn't eat lunch, not going to, just to give an example, not going to work for them, then is it financially feasible? Like, if you were just taking an example of lunch, if you spend $500 on lunch, is that person going to give you like business at least of $5,000, $10,000? Otherwise, it's not worth it. So is it going to fit into one in your financial budget that you have? And what is going to be the effect of it? Just you don't need to be able to do huge accounting for that. You know the numbers intuitively, like if you spend this much, is it going to bring in that kind of business? And third one is feasibility. It's a technical part of it. I would say that one, you can just keep a uh, cool little mind on that, because many a times we don't know what is technically feasible, possible, or not. Something that was not possible yesterday could be possible today. And we are not expert in everything, so we can ask someone who is an expert if there is some technology. You know, if you're thinking of developing some app or some kind of making an eye connection, and that way people just, you know, there's some kind of technology where they just start referring you just by you looking at them. Could happen. Who knows? So you are going to take next five to seven minutes and apply these filters intuitively. Because I just mentioned this to someone right now. Even when you think intuitively, intuition does not come out of nowhere. It is based on your past experiences and your training. So even when you say, I just made it up, you are making nothing up. It comes from somewhere and it has a value. So you are intuitively going to apply this filter to those ideas and come up with one best idea. Now you might think that what if I came up with three best ideas or five best ideas? Then you are going to rank them in your head because when you go to the next stage of prototyping, you want to create focus. You want to create focus for testing that one idea. And this goes back to testing. And if you realize at the testing stage that this is working, not working, needs improvement, you can go back and pick number two idea. Make sense? Would anyone like to share your ideas? Like anything that is that you feel absolutely excited about? Why don't you share? I, I think that uh, having a newsletter, like a monthly newsletter to go out, it's something that I've always wanted to do, but I've never made the time to do it. So just having a newsletter that goes out to my current clients, past clients, family and friends, with um, three little tidbits of information, maybe a humble brag about this magazine I was just in, and some product that I think is really cool, or a new store that just opened, and, and then something on philosophy about, about design, you know, uh, something about your process, just to share more information about yourself, and then to have 
a call to action at the end that says, if you have a friend or family member or colleague who's moving, then please think of me and forward this email. So simple, but to do it 12 times a year um, so that you're always top of mind. Uh, and I know probably a lot of people do uh, newsletters already, but it's not something that I do, so I think it's something that would be a great quick fix. So. That is, that is, and uh, when we go to the, we can discuss this in prototype stage, it's a good example to discuss, and that's a great idea. Anyone else? So I was just sitting here with Meredith here, and we were talking about referrals, and um, I was surprised to hear um, that she doesn't get a lot of referrals. They're sort of ones and dones, and then, we were trying to drill down on why, and she was not really sure why. And then it just came in my idea, I was just gonna to suggest to her, I was thinking about my own referrals. What if we submitted, and maybe people do this, but I've never done it, and I don't think Meredith has, is asking post um, completing the job, giving them a questionnaire and a survey, how did this feel for you? Did this work out? And that thing, I'm thinking, that would be really financially, technically easy to do, viable, we're not doing it, and then we can drill down more on why if they fill them out, so. Absolutely, right. that's, that's a great idea. And it's people like to be asked, like, you know, the server comes to us in the restaurant to ask, how are you enjoying it? Your we hospital like to be asked. Asked. they ask you yeah. a few weeks later, how was your visit? How could we have made it better? Like, why aren't we doing that? It just came to me like, that seems so easy. Okay. And we're sitting here right now, sitting here going, we don't know why we're not getting referrals. We don't know why we're getting referrals. <laughs> well, we can ask in a little postcard, how did this work with you? Uh, and, and at least get some feedback on our business. You have to make it easy though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We will talk about that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And. Uh, but yeah, this was helpful. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you wanted to share an idea? Um, yeah, we talked about um, our contact with realtors and how easy it is to ask them for referrals because they're doing it all the time. <laughs> and it seems like it's less intimidating to talk to somebody about a referral when they are always doing it as well. So we talk about doing little presentations you know, on Thursday mornings when they get together, where it's, you, you, can, you can talk about a quick topic, you can provide them with, you know, a card with some five top tips and talk or whatever, and be able to say, right, when yeah, I'm so bright, do you feel like you can refer me? You know, because that's, it's so <coughs> unintimidating with people that do it all the time, and we're willing to refer them as well. So I um, that would be an easy icebreaker versus actually face to face asking for money for all That's, that's wonderful. It's, go ahead. Around Christmas time, New Year's, I wanted to do something to my clients, and I decided to just focus on the, the ones that I really like, <coughs> instead of just, you know, providing everybody. And um, I actually uh, baked um, very special cookies, and, you know, something that you could see it was, it was a lot of work, and I put them in little boxes, and I, and I personally delivered them to their house uh, with a card that my daughter actually Absolutely. I would love to get a <laughs> So, So that's the thing. You can take that. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for asking others to share ideas. And uh, so you can take next five minutes and uh, troubleshoot. Like just to give an example, which is like uh, her ideas of delivering cookies. Me cookies or handwritten cards, do you have ability to do it? Do you know how to bake to start with? If you don't know how to bake and you send terrible cookies, that's not going to be nice. So. <laughs> and uh, then if you are going to have, you know, Thursday morning breakfast presentation, then you might think about, are your clients, are the clients are going to find it desirable? I have clients going to make time on Thursday morning and come to your presentation 
or your clients are the ones who are actually late night persons, then you need to think about some different kind of event. So does that make sense? In that way, you can decide what is that one best idea. And I'm insisting on one best idea at this time because we need to prototype it and test it. However, you can create your top three ideas and pick one for prototyping and testing right now. And later on, if you realize it's not working, you can always come back. And we learned that. In. So do you need any time? It feels like everybody knows what their top idea is. Do you need time to pick your idea? No. no. Look at that. Do you need a minute? Yeah. Okay, take a minute. Don't fall in love with your idea. Remember the purpose of your idea is to get referrals. If you realize that feedback forms are not working, they're only reminding clients of painful moments that they went through the project. So you're not gonna get a referral from them. Yeah, so you will need to improve, you will need to either improve your idea or you will need to go back and pick up. So that's what we do in prototyping. When we create a prototype, and obviously, I know all of you have always created models, done sketches. You know how to prototype. So <laughs> if this were non-designer uh, workshop, I would actually ask them to work with their hands and ask them to make prototypes, get, them, get their creative juices flowing. But you guys don't need to do that. I can just give you a few examples. And when you actually sit to solve this problem, you can create prototypes on your own. So, just an example, if you took, you know, if you decided that you are going to do a care package campaign or you are going to do cookie boxes, you need to decide what kind of cookies are you going to put in. Are you going to put in a handwritten card? What is that card going to say? How is it that card going to, what is going to be the call to action? What are you going to ask them to do? And then you can, like, are you going to put, or, or do they like cookies? Or are these, you know, if you're sending cookies, are they gluten free? Do you want to not send cookies, send something else? Maybe it's a fruit basket. So you will need to create that one actual care package in, which will base on, you might want to go back to your empathize stage and ask a few questions to certain clients, or at least try to understand. You can even use social media. You don't really need to ask questions directly. You can stalk them. You can stop them, you can find out what they like, dislike, what is it that they are going to do. Maybe you know you decided on lunch meeting. Make sure you are writing down the script beforehand. Like things, think about whatever could go wrong and how you can make this entire process result oriented. Don't forget that it's not for you to enjoy, like you can enjoy the lunch obviously, but it's not for you to enjoy the lunch. The purpose of the meeting is that you get the referral. Are you going to ask for the referral in lunch meeting or after lunch meeting? It depends totally on your client. Some people like to talk about business or transaction during the social interaction. Some people don't. You will need to figure that out. Then maybe you are just going to ask whole lot of your clients to use a referral app and they are just going to, once the project is over, they are going to get an automated email which is going to send them to referral app, fill in the referral and it goes, you just test it and goes. Or maybe it's just a button on your website. What is it? Just sketch it out, make cardboard cutouts, make, even making an actual app is not that difficult. Until we do something we feel that it's difficult, once you do it, it's not that difficult. Then you know. So that's prototyping, and once you have that prototype, we go to the phase of testing. And how do you test all these things? How do you? So there are 10 different ways of testing your prototype. And I have just thrown in some examples here. Obviously, you can talk to me later on and ask me what else could you do. The best one is actually ask the client. If you are sending the cookie box to a client, Call them up, ask them, how did they like it? If they liked it, what did they like about it? What did they dislike about it? Why, why, why? Don't annoy them though, they're clients. <laughs> and uh, ask them if they would give a referral. And if they say they like everything else and not give a referral, there is a problem. 
Like if they say that, you know, oh my God, I love your cookies and this and that and that. Oh, you've been so lovely. And then you ask, would you refer me to some other uh, contacts of yours? Oh, no, not now. Maybe, you know, call me after three months. No. If they say call me next week, yes. Call me after two weeks, yes. But if they say call me after three months, that's not going to happen. You need to then go back and change something. The third thing, try it with a smaller set. Try it with whatever that you are doing. Try it with two, three clients. If it works, doesn't work. Ask them why it doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, improve it. Do it again. If it works, do it for five, six clients. See what happens. If it works, then do it for 20 clients. And then, by then, you will have so much work that you will need to solve other business problems. And you can use this exact same method to solve those other business problems. And before we get there to other business problems, I just want to remind you that it's not a linear process. Whatever process we went through was, it felt linear because I wanted you to understand step after step after step. But at any stage, you can go back. Like if you felt like you didn't have enough number of ideas, you just don't know what the problem is, go back to define or go back to empathy. And you will know when you are doing it yourself, you will know what stage you need to go back to. It's more like, like this. Like I call it like an inverted spiral. You start at the bottom of the spiral like this. And you go on doing smaller, and you go on getting better, testing better, better, and then you will, but be sure that you will get perfect, the world will change, you will need to change your strategy. So this is ongoing process. If you are making strategy of increasing your revenue with client referrals, you will never, you can never stop improving. It's not like, you know, you got this in 2019, you got this care package perfected. May not work in 2021. By then, people's choices will change. People's habits will change. And you will need to improve it. You can do the same thing, but it might hold something else. And when we started, we were at this stage. And as you go on doing things, you're, from ambiguity, you will move to clarity and you will be more certain. And this green line is actually money. Then you can go on investing a little, little more money into it. It's, yeah, that's revenue also, but you're not making it yet. But in investment terms, like you can start with smaller investment and go on making bigger. So you don't have to fail big and be, uh, you know, feel disastrous about, oh my god, what did I do? You wouldn't have that feeling. And now, now you can answer this question that you answered in the beginning, which is how will you increase your revenue? Do you have a better answer? Yes. <laughs> that was scary silence. That was the scariest silence I've ever heard. I was like, what did we just do? So that's the whole point of this exercise that it helps you break things in smaller parts which are easy to do, easy to repeat, test and improve. And you can apply this method to any sorts of business problems. Here are the few and you can think of many more that you might have. If if this workshop wasn't helpful for, helpful for you and you thought, oh my god, I just wasted my one hour, please come and talk to me. I would love to talk to you. <laughs> if it was incredible workshop and you want to learn more and you want to understand more, you want to, this is just one of the innovation methods. There are so many that you can use and you guys will be, oh, sorry, we're taking a picture. <laughs> <laughs> And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. If you want to learn other innovation methods or talk, discuss, understand more, feel free to reach out to us, talk to us, ask questions, and we are here to help you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much.